Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This hallelujah is very weak. It seems you are not excited to be here. I want to hear a thunderous hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. We are still not there. This hallelujah looks like the one you are giving to me. I want to hear you shout a better hallelujah to the Lord. If you are shouting this hallelujah to the Lord, <laughs> That means you don't know who God is. I want to see how much you know this God we serve is. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! In order not to waste uh, too much of our time, I want to welcome everyone to the meeting. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. I am happy and grateful to God that our daddy is here. It is my privilege once more, a very great privilege to invite and introduce our father in the Lord, the Apostle Paul of our time, to speak to us tonight. I Join me to welcome, to speak to us, our Father in the Lord, Pastor Paul Rika. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, God, for sending your word to your children to assure them what you will do in their lives. Thank you, Father, because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. They shall have the desire of their heart by faith. You are able to do all things to bring water out of the rock for your people to drink. You are able to supply husband for your daughter in a lonely place. You are able to supply a wife for your son, even in the desert. I bless you and worship. And pray that God, you will satisfy the longings of your children. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, the proceedings of marriage from knowing the will of God to the wedding. Uh, something you will see unique with us is holiness in all aspects of life and living. So, We are interested 
in your holiness from the beginning to the end. You can die at any time. Hence, your marriage proceedings must be righteous and holy. In case you do not need, you may not need to finish the proceedings and you die, you will still make heaven. Two, the rapture is expected at any time. It's possible. You, the rapture may meet you on the way before the marriage proceeding is concluded. Besides, God is the beginning as I told you yesterday, and the ending of the marriage process. While the Lord begins in righteousness, he will want to end it in righteousness. So, your marriage must begin in righteousness and end up in righteousness. Yesterday, I told you what you are to do. Believe God that met you, that he has marriage in his plan for you and will work it out for your life. Then pray hard. Pray hard. To him, he has promised he will hear you. How will you know he has heard you? The Bible tells you, he will tell you. How will you know God has first spoken? He will tell you in John chapter 10. Verse 27. John chapter 10. Verse 27. The Bible tells us here. About the guidance of God. To his children. For God will speak to his children. In John 10 27. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. There is a property in you that will make you hear the voice of God. By the regular dealing of uh, of your regular dealing with God, you will get familiar with the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice. We hear the voice of our father. We hear the voice of our parents. And we can differentiate voices. Yes. <laughs> In John chapter 10, the 
The Lord is still speaking about hearing the voice of God. Mm. That he is the good shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. That's what Jesus is saying. And in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. So, he kept, he kept saying this. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. He will guide you into good things, including marriage. He will guide you into hearing him when he speaks. In Psalm 32, verse 8. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my arm. I will guide thee with my arm. The Lord will guide you. The Lord will teach you. The Lord will instruct you on the way that you should go. How to get a wife. How to get a husband. Note, God's guidance is for his children. God's guidance is for his children. If you're not a child of God, you're not obeying God, why are you asking him to guide you? Guidance is a precious thing which God gives to his children. Why are you, who are not a child of God, seeking guidance? Now, you are not born again. And you are asking God, give me a husband. And God said it is not part of him to give a stone to his children. It's not part of him to give a snake to his children. And you are a stone, you are a snake because you are evil, you are immoral, you are wicked, you are a witch, you are a wizard. You are asking God to give you marriage. Is it from among the witches or the wizards? Or from among the drunkards? Or from among the thieves? Are they then his children? So, guidance is a precious thing. And the Bible says, do not give holy things to dogs. Don't cast your precious pearl before a swine. He will trample it on the foot and rent you. So, telling you that before you come to God for marriage, make sure you're a child of God, you're born again, and that you're keeping righteousness. You are keeping the truth because bread, I mean, God says healing is bread for children. Spiritual guidance is bread for children. Spiritual blessing is bread for children. He that findeth a wife has found a good thing.
Away from God is a good thing. Rich and um, honor and riches are the inheritance of the Father, but a precious wife is from the Lord. And a good wife from the Lord, will he give a good wife to a sinner to torture the woman so that the woman should regret against God? So this guidance we're talking about definitely is only for, his, for children of God, those who are walking in his righteousness, those who will appreciate the blessing God will give them and give thanks to God every day. So, you will know because why you are his sheep. One of the ways the Lord uses to give, to show forth his will, can be as it happened in Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 3. I read from this one. First Samuel chapter three, verse one. In, in verse four, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet built on him. And the Lord called Samuel again, the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he called thee that thou shalt speak, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hear it. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tinkle. How, how was the communication here? The Lord, I will instruct and teach thee. The Lord brought up Samuel steadily to the point that Samuel recognized his voice. My sheep hear my voice. Through such an interaction like this, you can receive the guidance of God to a wife. Yes. A voice speaking to you audibly like a man talking in your sleep. Someone was sleeping. In your sleep, God can speak this way to you and tell you here is a why for you to marry. Here is a why. Or, this is the husband I have provided for you. So, you can hear a voice in this way. Again, it can be communicated to you in a parable form as was done to Joseph in Genesis. Genesis chapter 37.
Genesis. Hello. Come and remove this thing. It's disturbing us. This one. Chapter 37. Move the phone away. Move the phone away. Genesis chapter 37. You know the story of Joseph. How the Lord revealed a future to Joseph. Now, in verse 3, or let me rather, let me read from verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheep in the field. And lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And he hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed Yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee? To the earth. It, this year, this one is a dramatized guidance. The, 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 the Lord gave Joseph a drama. He watched a drama, an event that occurred, watched in a dream. And so when he watched the drama, And woke up. Understanding of the of what he watched became transparent, apparent, clear. The dream had a very simple meaning, direct, direct. The dream connect like this, connect like this, connect like this. He woke up. He saw that. It, this is, not, in fact, everybody knew that this was God. And the interpretation of it was clear. So the Lord knows how to make you in, know the voice of God. He knows how to do it. Yes. Now, in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1. John, chapter 14, verse 1. The Bible tells us, What you should expect. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Look at it in verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. 
Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. There is peace that follows the message that comes to you. There is peace that follows the message that comes to you. And that peace is telling you it is God. You are not afraid. Your heart is not troubled. It's not all dream that, that, have, that is a message from God. Because sometimes your anxiety can bring dream. And such dream will not give you peace of mind. Sometimes Satan can bring dreams. Such dreams do not give you peace of mind. Sometimes a lady can, a mommy or that lady can give you dream towards herself or somebody else could give you dream to connect you to a mommy or that woman. Or a, 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 a man that is occultic, evil, can manufacture dream to make you think towards him. All those ones you will not enjoy this peace. Peace I give unto you. But you have assurance. You have peace. Peace in your heart. The peace that shows this thing is real. Again, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Substance. Assurance. Evidence. You just receive a full conviction in your heart. This is it. Full conviction in your heart. Assurance. You are receiving assurance. 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 You are seeing proofs. 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 Showing up. Evidence of things not seen. You are getting proofs. With peace. Assurance. Again, in Second Kings, Second Kings, you find the case. How? A woman understood Elijah, Elijah. She understood Elijah. Her second king chapter four. From verse eight. To verse 10. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in Tita to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this man is an holy man of God, which passed by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in the Can you see? 
Elisha was always passing by. Elisha was always passing by. And this woman observed Elisha keenly for a time and a conviction was formed in his heart, in her heart. I understand by my observation, by my persistence, persistent watching, persistent interaction, this man is a holy man of God. Was, was the woman right? Sure, she was. It didn't come by dream, but by persistent interaction, observation, a conviction of God is formed in him. This woman will be your wife. This woman will be your husband. You just receive the conviction and assurance. Remember, you have been praying and you have been available in the hands of God to lead you according to his will. To lead you. So he is he will use various methods to lead you. Sometimes. It could be by prophecy that somebody else, the Lord told somebody else, tell this person that I have given him this person for a, a wife. I have given him this person for a husband. It can come like that. So, in summary, there is what we need to know in Matthew chapter 18. <laughs> Matthew chapter 18, I read verse 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every word may be established. You will see that God does not only use one way. There are combinations of ways. If he uses prophecy, another part somewhere will confirm it. He will use two or three ways. Don't just rise up from your dream and run. Check up. If it's of God, the accompanying peace will be there. If it is of God, a prophetic word may be there. If it is of God, there is a circumstantial ill evidence. This is a drama actor that the Lord speaks from. I said, it was just a drama got acted somehow. And by it, the Lord is telling you, this is it. So there are, and not, God must prove that that dream is from him. God must prove that that revelation, that prophecy, that this, that, that meter is from him. In the book of Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah. We are reading 
chapter 26. The Lord, uh, first, let's read verse uh, three and four. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting peace. The Lord will keep in perfect peace. So, in various combinations, various ways, the Lord will show you. The Lord will assure you that he is involved in that guidance. Yes. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 22. Chapter 15, verse 22. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in a multitude of counselors, they are, they are established. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You need counseling. When you have received the guidance of God as you are convinced, you go to God, you go to a mature Christian, a leader, to seek counsel. This is how I feel. This is how I received it. How do you look at this? You go to the leadership. It's not that you start spreading it. You'll be doing wrong to spread it. Before you know it, the man has heard that hey, this sister is pursuing him. Or the lady has heard that this man is uh, coming to her. To her. You are abusing the matter. If God is with you in that matter and has revealed to you, nobody will take her. God will keep her for you, except you backslide or turn off. Then you have failed. Jesus came to bless the children of Israel, but because they rejected him, he left them until uh, and turn to the Gentiles. So it's not that once the Lord has chosen a woman for a chosen a woman for you, she must be your wife, whether you like it or not. No, He gave it to you in righteousness. If you fail righteousness, you have become a snake. You have become a, 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 a stone, as He said. He cannot give snake or stones. He will give her to another person who is. A child of God. If the Lord leads a man to you and you refuse, you have right to refuse. He will keep will close your chapter and lead him to another. But as long as you are willing, God will keep him for you. So there's no more time of the flesh inside. If he oh church is the one delay, don't worry. Shall, that lady will still remain for you. He shall walk out that it will be you again. Even if he dies, the, the Bible says the vision is here for an appointed time. Though it tarry, wait for it. It shall surely come and it shall not tarry. So trust God and be peaceful. Even if the lady is saying no, be peaceful. If that no is a mistake and she remains a child of God, the Lord will come again to her. You keep on your prayer. 
So that is how you should do. Now, after you have seen the will of God, you go for counseling to your leader. Then to the marriage committee. Without telling the lady what your conviction towards her is. Don't even use other mechanical way. You are dating yourself. And God doesn't like dating people. He wants clean things. He wants purity. So don't inform the lady. Don't be telling people about move to the committee and tell them. The reason why we say move to the committee is because you need to be, you need to be verified. Your revelation has to be verified. Whether they came from God or you have received from God or not, the committee will go get at the lady to know is she already in somebody's hand so that you don't go and disgrace yourself or go and cause trouble and bring on godliness to the church of Christ by, by going to use your own money, your own position to snatch a woman because she starts now going by the flesh. In that case, you have a wrong foundation for your marriage. You have done evil from the beginning. So that's why we say, no, we will check her up for you. If she's free and is not, or somebody has not yet come in, we will want you to go for tests. So that you will not carry HIV and one pass to another person who is innocent. She too needs to go for tests so that she will not carry HIV or any other sickness and come and point in your life. Or check her for some of these dangerous sicknesses that can be transmitted. If it's something that can be cured, we advise her to get it cured or you yourself get it cured. So that your marriage can be good. You won't pass anything evil to your marriage partner. Then you, you can now be allowed to see, to speak your mind to her. You can be allowed. Uh, what if she is the one that comes first? A woman. Well, uh, we will study the case and know. Is it possible that the woman can also speak her mind to you? God has led me to, to you as a man. Yes. But at what circumstance? We shall know whether her circumstance requires that. A woman who is advancing in age, who has really been fully right for marriage, can do that. We, why would we not allow that on a young lady which is, who has ample time? To say, please take your time and be pray. You are young already. But a woman who is already mature, that we really want her to marry, it's better she clears her mind. So we can allow a woman like that to talk and ask, tell the man, will you marry me? It's possible. It can be done. For Ruth, went to look for Boaz. That Boaz should marry her. And Boaz accepted. There's no shame to that. So depending on the circumstance, the church can allow that. Then you wait for the answer. When the answer is given, beautiful. Back to the marriage committee. The marriage committee will want the person to communicate the answer. And uh, when the answer is positive, we will want introduction, parental introduction. Let the, the ladies' parents be informed the brother's parents too, and relations be informed about their marriage proceedings. This is the person I'm going to marry. So that can be done. Of course, the committee would have investigated very well that neither of the two persons have, uh, has married before. That none of them is a divorcee. This investigation has to be done so that you don't marry another's wife and it becomes, a, it becomes a adultery or you find yourself committing fornication. So with this now, with the parental consent is sought, the next thing now is 
uh, courtship. Courtship can be exercised for six months or nine months where you learn to know yourself, learn to discuss, learn to acquaint with yourself, love yourself, and then uh, be, be preparing for your wedding. The committee will guide you in the courtship. Guide it in your courtship. Now, uh, after that is a dowry payment. Uh, of course, what the parents want should be paid them. And then the wedding can take place. At this, at this point, the, the, I mean, the, the, the proposed husband and wife can choose whether they will want to go into white wedding in the church or after the dowry, that's public celebration or after the dowry, the church can only pray for them and they can have their own stay as husband and wife, whichever one they choose, but we advise public wedding. I'm saying so because some people say, I don't have money to do some, to do elaborate wedding. So I felt, as since I paid the dowry, the church can just give us a blessing. A few people can gather together and the pastor pray for them. And give them chance to go and stay. But I advise that the wedding should be done. At least the church will assist if they really don't have the money. How much does it cost to do wedding? To gather people together. That one is good. So this is marriage proceeding. That a Christian should be guided by and all these things are done in righteousness and holiness. No kissing one another, no petting, no traveling alone. The husband, the boy, the man and the woman are traveling alone to a, to a particular place. There is strong tendency of embracing themselves. That's why another person has to be there traveling with them, even to visit relations or whatever is the thing requiring traveling, another person must be sponsored uh, along with them. So uh, I want to give you a little time for question now, in case you have any questions to ask, whatever is there might be related to you in the question time. Thank you so much, Brother Alex. You can take over for the question time. Let me know what are the questions of the people. Amen. Daddy, thank you very much, sir. Um, it's time for question and answer. I know everybody have been warming up for this time. So please, I want to ask everybody to make sure their mics are mute so that uh, the meeting room will be orderly. If you have a question, please raise up your hand with the Zoom system, you have the hand tab over there, raise it or you send me a message that you have a question. I will call you for your question and ask your question to daddy and daddy will answer you. Praise the Lord. So quickly, without wasting time, uh, we have somebody already waiting to ask question. Brother Mabeni from Egypt, go ahead with your question. Amen, amen. Uh, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the the first one is uh, the time for preparation. You say that uh, the courtship can last for about six to nine months. Let's say someone who understands um, holiness, who is living a holy life. I see for men, it's really tough more than for women because the pressure for lust, especially when you hear the voice of a woman, 
at that time. Is it is it proper at the time of courtship to talk together? Uh, how would the talking be? Because I see that talking, even though you're not saying uh, dirty words, it just promotes, uh, it, it makes you to lust in the mind. I say this out of experience. I was ignorant. I, uh, I remember there was a time after I was saved that I went into a relationship. Uh, this, this is one of the things I regret. I didn't touch the, no holding of hands. I put boundaries, no kissing, no hugging. But I realized that the pressure, even the resistance to resist lustful thoughts was weakening over the period of time. So it would be how this, can you talk more about the, the, the process for the courtship? Uh, so that's number one. God has given man ability to bear the woman's voice. You have been bearing your mother's voice, your sister's voice, your neighbor's voice that are women and female. And in school, you have related with many their women in the school and you have been bearing their voice. So uh, you will bear. You, can, you will be speaking. You even have time to sit together in a public place because there was a, the, the, the committee will arrange it for you, either by telephone or by Zoom or whichever way you can be communicating. You can communicate. And the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. A righteous man has control over his, himself. So you can conveniently speak. She speaks, you speak. You could sit. Um, in, in a room, in, under a, a tree, or in Zoom, and whichever way, and you will do it righteously. Before you come to her, you have gone to God in prayer, and she too has gone to God in prayer, and you have put caution into your heart, nothing, will, nothing evil would happen. You'll be able to stay with her. Amen. And, and then the second question is uh, on the life of a student, a student in the college, uh, how to take care of one's spiritual life and the college. I know, uh, at least I'm aware that you were, you were a fervent born again Christian when you were in the college. So would you give us a guide how you lived your life in the university as balancing the balancing these two things together the spiritual life and the college life god bless you does that have to do with marriage is all this is only restricted to marriage i thought just the, let's go on marriage because i have limited time amen amen yeah okay amen god bless you brother mebani so I'll call on the next person, Sister Irene from Abu Dhabi. Amen. God bless you, Daddy. The, the yes. question is, uh, somebody asked me a question, that is it okay for those in courtship uh, to be praying together? Like after all is done, uh, when they're in the marriage committee, can they be praying together? Sure, that, is, that is even one of the purposes of the courtship. They can be praying together, but not in a closed room. Everything should be done open. They can come to a church building and sit together there, sit in the church and pray, or in another brother's house where things are done, are done in the open, but not under a closed door where Satan will be the third person in their prayer meeting. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Irene. Um, we will now move on to uh, Pastor Joseph to ask his question. Go ahead, Pastor Joseph. God bless you, sir. Amen. 
Yeah. God bless you, sir. Yeah. yeah, so my question is um when you were explaining, you you said you said when at the stage that the um, the man wants to visit the parents of the of the lady that he has to give them whatever they demand. So my question there is, uh, we know that alcohol cannot go and so many other things. Uh, in that situation, what shall the person do? Thank you, sir. Yes, you say you don't give alcohol, neither do you give the money to go and buy. That we don't do that we're marrying in Jesus Christ. You don't want to go to hell after marriage. Not, you don't want to go to hell after marriage. And you're asking them, you're pleading with them not to send you to hell because of their daughter. You tell them anything that cannot be done in Christ, don't do it. Because Christ is more than them. If they resist, they will eventually give way. That's why all sisters should be able to prepare their parents ahead of time. Particularly, you know who are those people that will be making noise for alcohol when your marriage case comes. Prepare such individuals. Tell them, make it clear before marital case will come on you. Or before you introduce somebody to your parents. To your parents. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, right now we don't have, uh, okay, we have Sister Irene. But Daddy, I have this question which would help our marriage committee over here. And also uh, the singles who are listening. A situation where uh, the brother have already told the sister before coming to his leader, or the marriage committee. In such a case, what do we do? We suspend the marital proceedings for at least three months because we really don't know whether it's the God that led him to that lady or not. We will want the matter to have received. We will check it if it's done in a dirty way. We will have to reprimand them, discipline them. If, okay, if we prove that it's just ignorance, not rebellion and fleshly business. We we'll still have to give them a period of time to disengage and go back to prayer, to know whether God is involved. Now that the marriage committee has come in, we want to know whether God is involved. So we're giving them another period to pray and check out, to know whether the conviction will remain stable. Since marriage committee too will pray along with that. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Thank you for the answer. I'll give it to uh, Sister Esther from Charger to ask a question. God bless you, Daddy. Thank you. My questions go like this. What if, like they said, um, if the brother comes to approach you before taking it to the church, what if the brother is not in Horemon, but he's from another denomination? Yes. Uh, the, in fact, if it is a brother, beautiful, we must ensure he's born again. And then, uh, you know, Horemon itself is not a denominational church. Neither do we hinder people going to denominational church. Yet, we must ensure that brother also is willing to follow the same doctrine. The doctrine of the truth. So that you don't endanger yourself. Because he can conveniently remove you, marry you and uh, remove you and say, don't come again. I don't like it. Don't go to that place again. And what shall it profit a man or a woman if she shall marry and lose her soul? That's why. Why we do not say no to a lady, a man from outside, but 
that man must be born again and must have the same compliance to the doctrine. What stops it from me coming to Horemo? Since Horemo is not a church, you can become Horemo and be still maintain your church. What stops it? Sister Esther, did you get the answer? <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. So I'll call on Brother Emmanuel from Egypt. Amen. Yes, God bless you, sir. We are privileged to have you, Pastor Alex, uh, Pastor Alex and Pastor Paul. Rega. I have this question someone asked me about before, and I'm going to quote Hebrews chapter 13, verses 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed and defied. But what among us come for marriage? Is it acceptable for them to go for white wedding? A widow. Nothing stops that because she has not been defiled by being a widow, or because she had married before. That is not a defilement. The defilement there is immorality. That between the two persons who are married, that there should be no immorality there. If it's immoral, if they are immoral, we reject it. They are not Christians. They are falling from, they are falling into sin. But as long as they are pure and holy, not to stop them, they are virgins before the Lord. Thank you, sir. Amen. I move on to Dubai. I call on Pastor Matthew. I thought he asked two questions. Uh, Brother Emmanuel, do you have another question? God bless you, sir. Go ahead. It's okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Pastor Matthew, go ahead, sir. Amen. God bless you, Daddy. We're glad to have you in our midst, sir. Uh, the question I have is that um, in a situation where we have uh, brethren comes before marriage committee, and um, we're dealing with uh, two different um, or remote uh, chapters. And um, eventually we got the reports, maybe from one of the chapters, that the brethren involved, I'm using the word brethren because I don't want to use brother or sister. So somebody don't think it is him or how we're referring to sir. And um, one of the brethren comes and say, um, it is good for the other brethren through their marriage committee that the other partner should move on. And the marriage committee reached out to the other partner, daddy, to move on. And sincerely, the person has moved on only uh, for the other brethren to come back through uh, their marriage committee to say, uh, sorry, brother shouldn't move on again or sister shouldn't move on again. He's not interested. What advice will you give to the marriage committee in such a situation, sir? God bless you, sir. Well, I don't know whether marriage committee of different assemblies or the same or more. Is it the same, same or more? Or more, sir. Or more, but different uh, uh, locations. Sir. Uh, when? Well, the marriage committee of the brother supersedes the marriage committee of the sister. So the marriage committee of the brother is the one that will take up everything. They can instruct the marriage committee of the sister to do some finding and pit them, but they are the ones to handle it. Okay, daddy, thank you very much, sir. All right, I think it's time to pray now. It seems your question. Uh, daddy, daddy, we have uh, two more people, sir. Just two. All right. Okay, so let's take Brother Chimeze first. Brother Chimeze, it's time for your question. Okay. Daddy, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Thank you, Chimeze. Yes. Sir, I want to ask a question, which is this. Does God gives a man wife? 
does God give a man a wife? Because when Adam and Eve sinned, and God was trying to correct Adam, Adam put the blame on the wife. Now, when you come to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtaineth favor from God. Now, the question, does God still give a man a wife? Because it has been an argument for some time. Uh, we have deliberated and discussed it, but we have not come to a direct conclusion. So I want to hear from you, sir. If God still gives a man wife. Thank you, sir. Did, did the Bible tell us that God repented of giving man wife because of what Eve did to Adam? Is there any portion of scripture that said God and God repented of giving people wives? Did you hear that? Yes, sir. In any portion of scripture? I, I'm not, sir. I can't be certain, sir. That's so what I'm not from who? Did you hear that God stated in his word, since I gave Eve to Adam and Eve came and behaved that way, I have repented of giving man wife. Did you hear it in the scripture? I think so. Eh? I think so, sir. That's why I'm asking to get I'm very asking, did you receive, did you know the portion in scripture? Let's go and read it. Do you know the portion? No, sir. So there's nothing like that. It remains the giver of wife. And not only wife, the giver of every good thing. In the book of James, chapter 3. James. Chapter 3. The Bible says, Okay, I was trying to get a portion of scripture that talks about every good gift. 170. Huh? 170. Oh, 117. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, my brother. Is that Prasanna? Prasanna, do you know how happy I am to see your face? <laughs> I am too, sir. Okay, thank you. 117. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Is a wife included? Is a husband included? Yes, every sir. good gift and every perfect gift is from is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift, if, you, if it is a woman that you really got, that you found, is because the Lord gave her, that's why you found her. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Amen. Amen. And lastly, uh, Sister Irene. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, bless you, Daddy. Bless you, Daddy. Uh, the other uh, question was from my brother. It was still about uh, praying together because uh, she requested the lady to be praying together with her. But the lady said she's not feeling it. Like she's not, maybe God first had to talk to her that it is okay, you can pray with this person that is going to become your husband. Yeah, probably the lady refused. The, red, the lady refused to be praying together with the brother. So the brother was asking, how should he go about it? Yeah, that is the question, daddy. Well, either the lady is not a Christian or 
she is in ignorance. The brother should check very well because if a person refuses to pray for you in a distance, when he comes nearer, he will not, she will not pray. But if it is ignorance, uh, let the pastor, the coordinator, enlighten her. But if that is done and she refuses, it's better the marriage should stop uh, at that point. Amen. Daddy, thank you, sir. Somebody just Hi. sent a message. Somebody sent a message here um, pleading with me to ask you, what if more than one brother comes for a sister? In that case, what... That uh, is why if more than one person or even three persons, maybe five, come to fetch water in a tub, they stand online. The first person who comes will put his uh, bucket first. After it is full, he goes. If the water is still flowing, then the second person. Is that clear? Yes, but sir. When the water stops flowing, then the remaining will go their way. Amen, sir. Which means they should stand online to the marriage committee. None of them should have seen the sister. The first person will settle with the woman and before the marriage committee. If she says, oh, thank, I have prayed and I'm assured this first man is my own. She doesn't know how many people are online. She's just dealing with one. If that person is okay for her, the remaining should go their way and look for their own wives. Their thought was not correct. Water has finished. Water. <laughs> but if if she goes and then the, she says no, then the second person, the, she's still there for the second person to come in. If she says no to the second person, she's still there for the third person to come in. Thank you. Everything should be done decently and in order. Daddy, thank you, sir. We are grateful for uh, the answers. All right. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's thank the Lord for the meeting today. Worship Him and praise Him. Yes, Lord, we bless Your name for what You have done. Lord, 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 thank you. Opening up our eyes for the message. What you have done tonight, bless you today. Jesus Amen. Now I'm praying for you. God will give you a wife. God will give you a husband. And uh, you who are married, God will give you good living together. You who have problem in whichever way, the Lord should be your sufficiency. The Lord should be your solution. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, I bring your children unto you. I am praying that you will guide them, you will lead them and not leave them alone. You will forgive their sins and restore them to your righteousness. Amen. And God, I'm praying for those who are looking for husbands. They're looking for wives. Father, may they find in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As a church, we say, God, all these are our sisters who are right for marriage, who are living, who are, nobody is thinking about them. They may not even have any man that is, uh, is interested about them. Oh Lord, supply husband to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do your connection. Do your connection among your children. And let distribution to be given to everyone, wherever she is, wherever he is. Let God distribute to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, Holy Ghost, 
appear to them and show them the will of God. Instruct them, direct them. Let them see clearly without mistake. Take away fear and timidity from them. Those who want to tell life, rebuke them. Because marriage is honorable in all. And dirty things should not come into marriage. Lies should not come into marriage. Father, for those who are married already, give peace to them in their families. Amen. I pray they will enjoy peace. Those men will love their wife, their wife will submit to their husband. Amen. Father, those who have problems, I commit their problems unto you. Amen. Solve those problems. Amen. Bless your children. Bless Amen. them. Give them good life. Amen. Give them good living. Give them joyful heart. Amen. Father, the committee, the coordinator himself, grace be sufficient for them. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Grace of the Lord and multiply. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Daddy, we thank you. Let us thank Daddy for what the Lord has used him for tonight. Daddy, thank you, sir. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. We love you. Thank you, Daddy. We love you.